let's have a little introduction to who we are. Yeah, because some people might not know who you are. One thing about <laughs> her, she's got big balls. Well, when you're lacking in certain areas, you need uh, big balls to carry you through. <laughs> Oh, we've got bloody hypnotist. He's yeah. a drama queen. Um, she's scared of hard work, guys. <laughs> we like yeah. to stir pots. We though. love a pot stir. <laughs> like, this is why she is the bitch. Mm, <laughs> yes. I manifested this bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You are listening to the Son of a Bitch podcast with your host, Christina Lennon and Joel Mignot. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of our podcast. The son of a bitch. <laughs> you love saying that, don't you? <laughs> I love it, girl. I love it. Uh, I just want to thank everybody that is tuning in to listen to we our hope. first episode. Hopefully you guys are listening. Because One girl. person. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mum, what are we drinking today? Well, it's mojitos today. Ooh. It looks a little bit like pond water. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you trying to poison me? We're, we're probably going to end up with big green things all over our teeth. Yeah. But... <laughs> Basically, every week we are going to be drinking something. Absolutely. I feel like as a mother and son duo, mm -hmm. we do our best talking after we've had a sip. Of alcohol. A sip, a gallon. <laughs> no, a gallon, yeah. I think people do know us best, though, for our conversations. Like, we love a deep mm. dive. We love to yeah. get down and dirty yeah. into topic. Your friends like to sit round and yeah. have a chat. So we thought we'd share it with the rest of y'all. And y'all better listen, too. girl. <laughs> yeah, I was quite surprised you agreed to do the podcast with me, to be honest. Mm. I was really excited at first, and the shine's kind of gone off a bit now. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> She's scared of hard work, guys. <laughs> she is. Let's have a little introduction to who we are. Yeah, because some people might not ho know who you are. <laughs> well, for the people that don't know who I am, I'm Joel Mignot. You might know me from Made in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a DJ, model. I'm also an aspiring chef. Mm. Bit of a hustler. Well, boy about town. Boy about town. People say I go to the opening of an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't go to the opening of anything. No, she doesn't. <laughs> it's got to be big if you want to get me there. No, it's got to be a holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's got mm. to be. I do love my holidays. But yeah. I am Christina Lennon. I am a psychotherapist, a hypnotist, a hypnotherapist. I've done 50 TV shows all over the world with my hypno dog. Princess. You may have seen BGT, I think, in the UK is probably the best known. It's the worst one. I'll tell you why later. You've racked up millions of views and yeah. stirred a lot of pots in I the have. press. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on to that as well. We like yeah. to stir pots. We though. love a pot stir. <laughs> like, this is why she is the bitch. Mm, yes. <laughs> one thing about her, she's got big balls. She's got audacity. <laughs> well, when you're lacking in certain areas, you need uh, big balls to carry you through. <laughs> I've got to say, you are great with advice. Yeah. Like, whenever I'm going through something, I'm like, Mom, help. Because <laughs> she has lived a life. I think there's one of oh your friends God. in my diary every week. <laughs> <laughs> my friendship group is just pure drama, but that's what we love. We love the drama. Yes. 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 And you love the drama too. Well, like, I like I like other people's drama, okay. not my own. <laughs> And we, we've both done quite well for ourselves. We're both into yeah. personal development, <clears throat> but it's not always been like that, has it? It hasn't <laughs> always been like that, Mum, no. I think looking back, I remember the days of water in cereal instead of milk. Give up. <laughs> He's talking absolute rubbish. No, I'm not. Where, where did you have that? <laughs> Your house. I don't think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I'd run out of milk that day. Yeah. He's yeah. a drama queen. Um, I've always had uh, an exquisite taste. Yeah, I like the finer things in life. Mm -hmm. I've always seen something in you, and I remembered asking you what you wanted for your pet lunches because I think I had something like 40 quid to do the shopping yeah. with. And I said to Joel, what do you want for your packed lunch? And he was like, focaccia bread, olives, and all this lot. I was like, what's wrong with a cheese sandwich? Like, <laughs> most normal children. Do you know what? I remember I used to love, like, coleslaw sandwiches. 
Like, I used to love the weirdest stuff. Broccoli and cauliflower toasties. Broccoli and cauliflower with cheese in it? Yeah. That was so bizarre. Mm. <laughs> That's just hit me. <laughs> yeah. Imagine eating a bloody coleslaw sandwich. Like, the, the thought He's... of that now makes me want to projectile vomit. Yeah. I do love coleslaw, though, but just don't put it in a sandwich. Not, well, not on its own. No. No. Even in those times, though, there was always the narrative push that you instilled, you know, a confidence within me to be able to, like, push and strive for my dreams. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter if the electric was going out. It didn't matter if all these things were happening. Like, those tough times, you know, you were always steadfast in, like, just keep it pushing. Mm. Like, always strive for your dreams. And I think as we sit here today, that's, that's what, we're about mm. it's like having the confidence to just go out and achieve with you having dyslexia when you were younger yeah well not just I mean, when you were younger still here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it, it taught you to work 110 percent yeah rather and i saw that it was like you had to work so much harder than everybody else just to get by and that gave you a really good work ethic. For a long time in primary school, I was like, I couldn't read. Mm. And I was in the bottom set for reading. But then I just gradually started to push myself. And I got to a point where I was like, oh, it's starting to click now. I think I'm just an extremely slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> extremely. Mm. But, uh, I don't know. I don't think you're a slow learner. Mm. It's just with words and things like that was that was a struggle, which you can't get away from words and the no, formation of words. It's in everything. So yeah. I don't think you're a slow learner. I just think it. I struggled with you that, struggled so. with that, which yeah. has an effect on everything else. When obviously growing up, you had me very young. Mm -hmm. You had me and you had my older sister, Leah. Mm -hmm. Um. You had me at 21, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what... I can't imagine having kids now. Mm -hmm. I'm 27 years old and you had two kids already. Mm. And you were out here in the big, bad world <laughs> being a single parent. I mean, it wasn't ever planned that no. I had you young. Um, but I'm glad I did. Yeah. Um, I am glad I did in some ways. I think you need that grit and determination. You get yeah. that grit and determination from. I can remember from a young age, you always pushing me to do things. Mm. I remember you taking me to do The Apprentice, audition for The Apprentice mm -hmm. at a young age. Mm -hmm. I re <laughs> like, I remember all the athletic events that we used to go to. Mm -hmm. And I always fell in those moments like, oh, wow, like I can do these things. Like it normalised pushing the comfort boundaries. Mm. It normalised me doing things that were like unusual to the most yeah. and ha may seem hard. So I I feel like, in a way, I've been conditioned mm. to look for the bigger picture and strive for what is more. Yeah. So, like, my some people might look at my lifestyle and what I do and think, oh, that's not achievable or that's that might not be attainable, but... I don't know any different from this because this is how I was raised. <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is how I was raised mm. to to strive for those big moments. Big moments, yeah. Mm. I'd done a lot of development yeah. by the time you came along even at 21 and I was going through that. Mm. I had that mindset of growth and so you had it from birth. Leah didn't. She mm. was you, my oldest daughter. You, obviously for those that don't know but you had it from being really young and so you are the product of that growth mindset so mm. it was weird watching you grow up and thinking oh my god he just goes for things but yeah. it's <laughs> it is true like I wouldn't even say I'm the most talented at any of these areas definitely not no <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I am telling it. No, but it's like just having confidence enough to just do it. And yeah. not think too deeply about it. You had a double page spread at the I Times whole, magazine. Yeah, when I was like ten years old. Yeah. For your art. Yeah. So this this is mm. maybe why you think 
I'm a golden balls. Yeah, that, I mean, that is where that term came from because it was literally, you'd go and play football somewhere and they'd be like, we want Joel to, he's really good. We want him to do this. And it's not like, okay. football. It, you were, <laughs> not me doing it, football. <laughs> American football? No, I remember that. I Ameri- was a fast runner. Yeah. So I was, I, I was a very fast runner, but Jesus, me and football. <laughs> No, 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 no. I actually remember once when I was doing football, the ball flew (laughs) towards me and I I howled, I screamed. I can imagine you flailing. (laughs) And the whole crowd turned around and like started laughing at me and I was like, oh my God. (laughs) And after that I was done. I was so done. (laughs) I was done. I wonder why you'd stopped. (laughs) Yeah. I was done, done. I think what it is with me, I've always been like a passionate person and I lead from my heart. I I only like doing the stuff that I like to do and that might be my Achilles heel as well. In terms of my career and striving for the things that I want. You can't always do everything you want. It's saying I'm happy to do things that aren't pleasant Mm. in the lead up to that. Uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable Mm. things. I'm, I'm used to being uncomfortable. It's just... To get to that point, mm. you know, the end goal for me is always, what do I enjoy? Mm. People go into professions all the time and they absolutely despise what they do, but they do it for the money. You have to be so passionate about mm. doing it because when it comes to those times where it's becoming monotonous, it's hard work, yeah. you've, the love is what keeps you going. It's not, you know, you have to love what you're doing because in those times where it becomes difficult, that's what you fall back on. And in the younger years, that's what you need to do. You need to try a little bit of everything to see what you are good at, what your talents are, and realize what you're not, and maybe move on. Throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You could put it like that. Whether it's God, whether it's Allah, whether it's the universe, whether it's yourself, it's we all have that power that we call upon and that was one thing i admired about you i learned about manifestation Mm. and law of attraction and things like that and i work on it you just did it naturally you do it and you didn't see any um obstacles in your way as i've grown older i'm starting to see the obstacles (laughs) i'm like fuck damn (laughs) oh my god i remember paying for you to go down to london and on the mega bus, may I add? Megabus. This is when oh. I just started modeling, yeah. and obviously, we you are from going... Leeds, mm. so it the castings, the photo shoots. I was back and forth, back and forth. I didn't really have a lot a place to stay. I could have stayed, I could stay with my aunties or a friend, but as I was getting into the city, I was back and forth, back mm. and forth. But I was remember a picture being taken somewhere like Costa or something, mm. and you posted it somewhere. And I said, oh, I said, you didn't have a drink. And you were like, oh, no, I couldn't afford a drink. Everyone else had gone. I felt so bad. <laughs> like, everyone else had got, you know, the frappes, the lattes or yeah. whatever. And you were just sat there with nothing in front oh, of God. you. Oh, <laughs> God. Jesus. <laughs> that yeah. was that was like, I think that for me was, it probably wasn't not, you, the worst not the, point. Not but... the cappuccino making him emotional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, where <laughs> I don't care about the Leeds Festival. No. <laughs> it was the lack of the drink. Yeah. Though even having those trips, going on the castings on the Megabus, like those moments were me showing my de- dedication and commitment to what I was doing. Mm. Um, yeah, like you just dive into it. Even when there's obstacles in front of you, financial obstacles or whatever it is, like mm. I was just so hungry and doughy eyed at the prospect of achieving some of my dreams that I just went into it Mm. you know and did it yeah um I remember when I buddy got scammed (laughs) do you remember when I got scammed these bitches (laughs) he worked all summer all summer this this is what I was spending my money on bond model agency in Leeds yes Mm. bitch we coming for you I'm gonna (laughs) sue your asses but you worked all summer, bless you, to have this photo shoot done. This was before I got signed. So before I got signed, I was I was really wanting to be a model. And I contacted somebody in Leeds and they were like, yeah, of course, come down. Like, we'll sign you. Um, 
but there's a 600 and something pound charge, but that that includes like your portfolio, like all mm. these things. And honestly, honest to God, doing those pictures, looking back at them now, I'm like, what the mm. hell? I looked ridiculous, like a full beat face, like blusher the lot, terrible eyeliner. images. Yeah, literally <laughs> eyeliner, like I looked crazy. Mm. Like, yeah. And you never used them, ever. No. You were it, laughed like, out of when, <laughs> all the agents. When I eventually got signed, agencies were like, oh, what <laughs> What are these? And I was like, oh, Jesus. I, I spent all my money on those as a kid mm. that I'd earn. Mm. But again, you learn a lesson I did. That. I learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> Don't trust a crock. <laughs> yes. But yeah, even going into modelling, like, I knew that I just had to get myself seen mm. and so I decided to go down to London in the hopes of being scouted mm -hmm. and so from there I ended up being scouted at, in Camden whilst mm. I was getting oranges. I remember you going like mum I'm gonna go down to London to be scouted and I was like oh god here we go again do you know what I mean <laughs> and sure enough <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. I mean, 10 years? I know, don't tell people, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, but literally, mm. I've done it for 10 years. I dropped out of college, I quit my job, mm. and I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I thought you'd be two or three years max. Didn't think it'd be 10. Neither did I. 10 years goes by so bloody quick. But, mm. like, the stories I can tell and the life that I have lived mm. has been so worth it. Like... I have lived my life, mm. maybe at the detriment to some of my other dreams and some of my other goals, but at this age of 27, I can take that one off and say, that's done. Yeah. Now what's next? Mm. And that's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I think the whole the whole thing is here. Like, even though I was on free school meals, even though, you know, times weren't easy, finances weren't mm. abundant, the the energy was there, the strength to push for my dreams was instilled mm. in me. And I think that's all it really takes mm. is, like I remember you sitting down and showing us the secret. I think subconsciously all of those things have like stayed with me. Mm. I even remember um, like when I first introduced myself to reading mm -hmm. self-help help books um i read the alchemist yeah have you read the alchemist i gave you it i think ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you probably found it at home yeah dear. no i think i did find <laughs> find it at home i remember you know being a young teenager and mm -hmm. reading the alchemist that i'd found in the house from you and like some of the quotes that stick with me are like People are afraid to p pursue their most important dreams because they feel like they don't deserve them. Hmm. I've always feel, felt deserving of my dreams. <laughs> I've always felt deserving. <laughs> Maybe that makes me a dick, but... <laughs> It is, that is one of the things about you, though. Yeah. You, other people don't feel they deserve anything. I've tried to always instill like i had instilled in me that we do deserve it mm. that we do you know what i mean yeah because that's that is a big big part of achieving something yeah. is you're never ever going to shoot for anything that you don't think you deserve yeah so true or that you don't think you're capable of i think i can literally i have two arms two legs a voice a head mm. i can do anything that you can do pretty much do you know what i mean i don't I'm one of those people that thinks I can just turn my hand to anything. I think that's true, though. Like, mm. even if you look at modelling now, like, the, the the diversity that's in the industry is amazing. You don't even have to be attractive you anymore. I mean, you don't. You have to offer something. Mm -hmm. You have to have a USP. Mm. And you have to be, you know, amazing on social media. And you have to have a, a mm. bright personality. And mm -hmm. people will buy into you. Yeah. You, you can be whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. I think people are just afraid of failure yeah but you can't be afraid of failure you have to keep going i think mm. i've definitely looking back had wobbles i've mm. had moments where i haven't believed in myself i've had moments where you know i felt like a failure mm -hmm. and 
I will get into most of those. But like here and now, like you just have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and Stop. keep it moving, girl. Mm-hmm. Keep it moving. As my mum used to say to me. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start over. Yeah. And it is, it's just keep going. And mm. that's one of my favourite things. It's just keep going, keep going, keep going. Perseverance. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say you've been a big part of my journey. <laughs> Funny <laughs> that, isn't it? But you, I, it was because of you that I got into the hypnosis. Yeah, I remember. Because obviously being pregnant with you, you were huge. Oh, bitch, I was a and big I was, yeah, bitch. yeah. And How many pounds? You were nine pounds, just shot nine oh pounds God. when you were born, but you were premature. Yeah. So, yeah. So I knew you were going to be big. and I was a heifer. Yeah. <laughs> I still am a heifer. I love to eat. Because of you, I got into the hypnosis because Hugh, my age-old friend, I met Hugh. Mm. Um, he was a stage hypnotist at the time. And he gave me a session on about childbirth. I think I was one of the first ever person people to have a childbirth kind of hypnosis session so that was so, to reduce pain reduce pain during the labor because i was absolutely petrified obviously i'd already had Leah and you like going into it you're not too scared because you don't realize how painful it yeah. is but <laughs> second time around and when you were bigger i was like ah, i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> so yeah hugh gave me the session and that's what sold me on hypnosis i was like my god God, it was mm. so powerful. I was like, I have to be able to do this. And so I started studying when, just after, I, d- I think I was already doing counselling when I was pregnant with you. Mm. But then it was like 1999, I started doing the hypnotherapy because um, I was like, I need that power. Yeah. So, it's, a, it's an amazing power. It is. It yeah. is super like. Mind control. Yeah. It is, my people. Is. A lot of hypnotherapists are like, you don't control the mind. Yes, you bloody do. Yep. You can't make people do things against the will. Yes, you can. Otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. No, but what's the point? If you can't, you can't do it on your own will. Mm. I've got to make you do it against your bloody will. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But do you not think it's just going into their subconscious and rewriting that? Yeah, it is, but I it's... think they've got to want it in a way. They've got to want the ch- the change. It helps. It definitely yeah, helps. Yeah, it does. But as I say, you know, I mean, we could get deep into this, but it's going off at a tangent. Yeah. But JFK was possibly shot by somebody that was hypnotised. Oh, my so, God. Hold up. Drop that back. <laughs> Let's wait <laughs> for This is not a conspiracy <laughs> podcast, Mum. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Having done, you know, learnt hypnotherapy, yeah. then was, and that was kind of my dreams that I had to put on hold as you were growing up. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't pursue that because I didn't have the funds or anything else. When you were really young, I studied it and then it was just there. And every now and again, I'd do some clients. And as I got a bit older, I did mm. more and more clients. And then it was when I was a stationary rep and I was terrible. Mm. I like just didn't go to work. I, yeah, I spent most of my time at home. But and what was, what, what was your... Um, frame of mind whilst you know I just hated it I just hated doing the job I yeah. w- it wasn't what I wanted to do but it was it was in conflict with who you thought you were I just didn't enjoy the job at all mm. Um, I enjoyed the mind coaching yeah. hypnosis selling you know, things to people well that's what I did as a job yeah yeah that selling. Like oh yeah, yeah yeah didn't enjoy that <laughs> so it was and then obviously the inevitable happened. They found out that I hadn't been seeing some of my customers. Oh, or most bloody of them. hell. And just... I got suspended. Oh. Uh, Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. And I you, got suspended. They left you your car? Yeah, I got suspended, <laughs> luckily for a month, with my company car on mm-hmm. full pay. Um, but if you remember rightly, I had promised you all that I was going to take you to Australia. Yeah, I remember. You know, you know these poor kids that only got coal for breakfast and stuff. I was going to take water, them to Australia. Water in this area. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd promised you I'd take you to Australia because my brother had moved there years before and we hadn't seen mm. him. So, and then I found out I was getting the sack. So I was like, shit. And I remember yeah. I rang Hugh, God rest his soul. He it's, passed recently. He passed, yes. Yeah. Um, and I rang Hugh and I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Mm. Traumatic situation. And he said, why don't you do my show? And he had the dog, hypno dog show. 
And I was like, I can't do that. No way. I'm not the kind of person that can stand on stage. And for all I'd done an awful lot of personal development, that was not one of the steps I'd ever taken. No, you'd never, ever done anything like that. I'd never, ever. I mean, I wouldn't have done anything like this. It just... You you ran away from things like that in the past. Yeah, yeah. It was, I remember we'd had a family get together and I'd organised mm. it. But it came to the point where you had to just stand on the mic and say thanks to everybody for coming. And I made yeah. Bronya, my older sister, do it because I didn't speak on a microphone. Yeah. So that's how bad I was. And so when he suggested it, it was like, this is not even like a consideration. Attainable. But the next day I had to go to the job centre Oh God! Not the and job that center, girl. it was like <laughs> this is worse than doing that. Yeah, because you're capable. Exactly, mm. and then that, I, and that, that's when I thought, do you know what? I've got a voice. Yeah. He's got a voice. Yeah, and that's all it takes. I mm-hmm. can move the same way he moves on stage. I can speak the same words he speaks with the same volition, the same projection. Yeah, I can. So I can do that, and I had to kind of take myself through the logistics of it all and so I rung him and I was like I'm gonna do it and he literally sent me a video of his show Mm. that I scripted I literally wrote the script and I rung the universities and just said because he used to work the university circuit and I just said the show's back do you remember it and they were like yeah Yeah. amazing show because it was brilliant Mm -hmm. it's brilliant when he did it (laughs) Um, so yeah and I think I got six shows booked in and most yeah. of them paid up front as any, you know, savvy businesswoman would do. I thought, I'll take that money. I'll take everybody on holiday. She took the money and she ran <laughs> <laughs> all the way to Australia. <laughs> we went to Australia for a month. We had a great time. Yeah, yeah. That was that was memories. And I thought, do you know what? Sod it. And I had to learn the show while I was in but I Australia. But I love that about you. Like, you're mm. very much like, let me just live my life and then worry about it when it gets to the bloody melting point. Yeah. Can, can, can you do this? Of course I can. Shit. How do I do that? Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But that is it's how I your, operate. Throwing yourself in the deep end. Yeah. And again, it's me being a work away from pain kind of person. I'm, yeah. I don't get motivated to work towards things. Yeah. I work away from pain. So I have to put myself in a painful situation for me to take massive action. And I've learned that about myself, yeah. learning the own manu- manual for my own brain. Mm-hmm. So I decided, right, I am, you know, I'll do it. Booked the show, spent the money. So I had to learn. And the first show, oh my God, in we won't say where because I don't want them going back on to me for a refund. <laughs> the first show was diabolical. <laughs> Honestly, it Woo! was. It still gives me palpitations thinking about it. Was, it. To be honest, from the viewers' point of view, then they enjoyed it, didn't they? Yeah, because they didn't have the foggiest idea what, what actually was supposed, was supposed to, to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, I did. <laughs> Hugh, had, Hugh was old at that point and he was doing yeah. the music for me and he put the wrong music on, which threw me off. And then he was trying to get my attention to tell me stuff, which threw me off more. Honestly. It was awful. I just wanted to be an ostrich and throw my head in the sand. <laughs> like I was just like, what is going on? I think that was the beginning. I always remember somebody saying to me after I'd done like 15 shows, they were like, have you ever failed on? I thought, Jesus Christ, my first show was the biggest failure yeah. ever. And then literally... Didn't people come up on stage saying like, it's okay? No. <laughs> you making this up? Yeah. <laughs> Jill's got his I'm like, damn, that was bad. <laughs> Let me sprinkle some salt. More dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Embroider the truth. I am Irish. So. <laughs> I remember I went off stage. I literally told people that I'd had a technical fault and I walked (laughs) off stage and I was like, I can't do it. So it was was you that was like, mum, people are shouting, they want to see the dog, go back out and speak to them. And when I did, Mm. I learned that they were all really enjoying it and people were going under, but they weren't responding to the suggestions I were giving them. I, I hadn't got them deep enough. Yeah. Um, I'd got them deep enough to go to sleep or what looks like sleep, but not deep enough so to, f- to cause amnesia. Yeah. 
which was the next step that needed to forget the number seven and it just wasn't happening. So that was a disaster. So for people listening, what is hypnosis? The, the, it, that would take a whole podcast. Yes. Uh, well, no, it wouldn't. It'd take <laughs> probably a couple of years. But basically, it's an altered state of awareness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> some people say that a bit like driving your car, you arrive at your destination and you think, how many people did I kill on the way here? Because you had no <laughs> idea how you got there. Like autopilot. It's Yeah. So it's like you you... You know, you can you can create hypnosis by confusion, like yes. getting people out of the head kind of thing. So it's like a state of like unconsciousness. It's not unconsciousness, no. It's consciousness. People are conscious still. Right. That's why when people watch shows like, oh, that person fell, and the bang, they they save themselves from banging their heads, uh, but they're not unconscious. Uh, but a lot of them forget what they've done. In That's the causing show. amnesia. Right. Or something different. Okay. Anyway. Ooh, girl, that's a lot. <laughs> we, we might do another show. Yeah, another we will. We, we will get about into this. Because it's such an interesting topic. Yeah, everybody's... Which is why I do it. I love it. It's yeah, fascinating. It is. So, but yeah, that show. A couple of shows later. Um, and Well, just after that show, mm. I got offered to do Britain's Got Talent. And I said no. Mm. The second show I filmed was for German TV. And then my third show was Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. I literally went on Britain's Got Talent had a, and I'd only done another successful show before. It. You said imposter syndrome who? Yeah. <laughs> she was like, let me get the I think certificate. I, I think I've got the reverse of yeah, that. Yeah, you were like, bitch, this is why I'm saying she got big balls because who the hell is doing that? I just thought, well, Britain's got talent. People love to see people fail anyway, so. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. And you can imagine, I went with her for Britain's Got Talent and mm. I was like, I've just seen what she's bloody done. <laughs> like, is, is this going to be the same on TV? <laughs> But it could have ruined your thank, life as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but thank God for the edit. You'd, you'd, yeah, <laughs> you'd, you'd had the holiday, so you had to support me. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she put us to work. That started BGT, like it all blew up then. It all blew the hell up. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was papped on my doorstep, stopped in the street. It was ridiculous yeah. at that time. But then since then, I've just done... You've done so many TV shows like Loose Women, Lorraine, Lorraine, The World's Greatest in LA, The World's uh, Best, oh, yeah, The World's Best yeah. with Drew Barrymore, RuPaul, RuPaul, James Corden. Yeah, you came to LA whilst I was living mm. in LA. Yeah, and so it was like a Joel Christina take LA moment. Yeah, we did a month. Well, yeah, was it a month? We did. Yeah, me and David oh, went. Wow. David, my partner, we went for. A month. Oh, wow. We'd have been there a lot longer as well if I'd have got further in the competition. Yeah, that's but... <laughs> true. That is true. But yeah, we were there for a month. So it was it was good. It was good. It was good fun. Do you have any little stories for us? So there was... Any behind oh my the God. scenes There's so stories. many I've got. What, of the whole time? Well, yeah, like... I think I was really good at dissing people. I figured, oh, and this is right. something I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say shit. something I get from you, but maybe you get. No, it from I get me. it from you. All, my friends say it all the time. You're getting more like you, but you're getting more like you. I'm like, fuck God. you now. <laughs> it's. I remember when I did. <clears throat> I'd done the Lorraine show, mm. and I was with Princess, and I was taking her out to the smoking area because Princess likes a fag after the show. <laughs> she needed. <laughs> she needed a wee. And as I walked through the door, Colleen Nolan sat there. Mm. I can't remember whether she was smoking or not. And as I walked through the door, she went, hi, like this. But I don't know her. I didn't think she was talking to me. So I just completely ignored her and walked straight past. And my manager <laughs> was stood at the other side, just like, oh, my God, you just dissed for Colleen Nolan. I so, mean, and then, I'd have done the same, babes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think... The worst diss was when I was in LA. Mm. I was, we just finished filming and I was out with the dog again and loads of the production staff was there. And this guy starts approaching me and he looked crazy. <laughs> and I was like, and you know, we'd had some experiences. Who is this? Yeah, I'll we tell you who. Wait a minute. 
we had some we've had some crazy experiences in, like LA, in America. Eh? Yeah. People Jesus. are crazy. You have to be careful. So I'm stood out there and this guy's approaching me and he looked like like some weird scarecrow with like a drawn on beard. <laughs> <laughs> and Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are you talking yeah, about? <laughs> Jeez. And I'm stood there and I was like, who is this guy? And I looked at the production staff thinking, <laughs> are they going to call security? Did somebody sneak in from Skid Row? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was thinking. So anyway, all the production are staring at me and like they're looking at me as though something's kicking gonna kick off so yeah. i'm thinking this guy's dangerous the no you know he maybe he comes around here a lot and he walks up to me and he goes can i touch your dog and i went no i said she bites like that and i turned my back on him and so he he was like oh um and he started asking me questions about princess mm. and i was like can you not touch her please like that and i kept, just kept turning my back and moving and i'm looking at production thinking why are they not calling security <laughs> eventually i just said i said could you move away please and i turned walked to production and they all had like shocked looks on the faces and i was like what the hell and they went, went we can't believe that and i was like no neither can i and they went <laughs> they said he never speaks to anybody and i went who is he and they were like mike darnell he's the producer of big brother oh, wow. the world's best <laughs> like he was the guy that booked me on the show and i just literally treated him like some vagrant Jesus off the street <laughs> and when Drew Barrymore walked in, mm. my in no, I think I was in her dressing room. In my head, I had Debbie Harry. You won't even know who that I is. It's like know. an old pop English okay. pop star. But when they told me Drew Barrymore, I'm not good at names. That's She's who I imagined. I know. Come on. So when she walked in the room, I instantly was like, <gasps> I went, Oh my God, it's you. <laughs> She's <was> like. <laughs> <laughs> Not Drew Barrymore. What's her name? Debbie Harry. <laughs> That's who I thought it was going to be. And when oh she walked God. in, I was like, what the hell is she doing in here? Oh, Jesus, uh, Mum. But, yeah, there's, I mean, I could spend a whole podcast on the I mean, there's goss. loads of stories that we both have. Yeah. What's the worst celebrity you've met? Mel B. Really? Mel B oh, I didn't even know worst. you'd met her. Yeah, I met her and she was the worst. And... She made me feel like shit. Really? Yeah, I met her. It's probably because she's from Leeds as well. That's, what, that's exactly why I went and spoke to her. I was in this party in LA. Were you drunk, Joe? No, I oh. wasn't. I literally, <laughs> normally I would be. Like I've got plenty of those stories, but I was at a Maxim party. And I was like, oh, my God, that's Mel B. She's What's from Leeds. What's a Maxim party? Maxim's a magazine. All oh, right. So it's a magazine party. And I was like, oh, my God, that is Mel B. I went up to her and I was like, oh, my God, you're from Leeds. Like, I'm from Leeds. Like, really wanting a connection with her. Because, like, obviously, being mm. in L.A. alone at 19, 20 years old, mm. I, I wanted that connection with somebody. I wanted that familiar and voice. The, the most famous person in the world. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she gave me all that this. She was like, no. She, she literally said, no. Really? And turned around and walked off. <gasps> I'd barely even opened my mouth. And I was literally stood there like, Ugh. but at the time, it was around the time she was going through her divorce with her husband. Yeah, she so I think she might have been going through some personal issues, but it affected me. I was like, damn. Mm. There's some she she out lives here. literally in hospital. Yeah, so now. I'm, I'm a run <laughs> up on you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, good knock on the door. <laughs> you could literally walk to her house from hours. <laughs> I think, though, for me, that was a lesson because, like, even when you're going through something, just be kind to people. Like, mm. you don't understand how you could affect somebody. Mm. Like, if somebody comes up to you and wants to a picture or just speak to you, like, l give them the second to speak to you. It is it is hard, though. I, I mean, mm. obviously, I'm no Mel B, but, we've, <laughs> we've, but I've had a moment, a tiny little taste of that being recognised in the street. We're definitely giving Zeb list, mom. And yeah, <laughs> but literally, when I just done BGT, I was there for a, you know a week, maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Having people stopping you constantly in the street, yeah, of people you see keep people's cameras coming round. 
the train seat, taking pictures oh, yeah. of you, stuff like that. I've, and I've had that too. I had that on a day where I was really going through it. Mm. And to be polite to people, to be stopped oh. every two seconds, to have your picture taken when you've got no makeup on, you feel like your An life's falling stomach. apart. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's like, will you just back the fuck? Do you know what I mean? I, to be honest. So imagine that your whole life. I can imagine. You probably learned that. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Not today, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> I remember there was one time me and Robbie were bloody having an argument in public. Oh, and somebody was like, can I have a picture, please? <laughs> and I was like, ah! <laughs> no way. I was like, no. <laughs> no, that, but that's the one time that I've been like yeah. flustered. But that's what I mean. Imagine that your whole life. Yeah. That is, you know, and she's obviously, she has probably a million, that times a million yeah. her whole life. So that brings me nicely on to my rant for this week. Oh, hit us. Which is also a rave. Okay. It's a rant and a rave. So tell people thing. why we do the rant and so the So the rant and the rave is just, you know, whatever's like boiled our blood, yeah. whatever's getting on our tits or, or, or something that needs a moment of praise yeah that we yeah. adore and love yes that needs recognition yes so my rant and rave is both consistency Ooh, she is a hard nut to crack exactly because consistency rant is like oh my god anytime you're doing anything everybody's like you got to be consistent you got to be consistent it's like fucking hell and at first you set off on a journey like podcasting you're yeah. like this is gonna be so much fun creative yeah, yeah. ideas and then you get into it and you're like fucking hell i've got to sit next to you <laughs> but it's like it's the pleasure <laughs> It's the consistency of yeah. not just doing so you, anyone can do something once or twice and you know put loads of effort into it, but to keep doing that yeah. thing and putting the effort into it and it's it can suck the life out of you. you Would know? you say that you're a person of routine though? Because people, some people that love routine love consistency. I am not. Me, I always I always described myself as a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. <laughs> what does that Do you know mean? what I mean? Have you never heard no. that? <laughs> Where is this fly? <laughs> Unless you buy your pants. <laughs> So basically, I just, you know, go aware of the wind blows. Oh, okay. It's yeah. just like, you know, I, don't, I never used to have a structure or a plan. Yeah, I think I'm exactly the same. Yeah, and... Whenever I try and apply structure, I just think mm, I'm not that kind of person that, that can have structure. Yep. And I've had to learn mm -hmm. structure and consistency. And it's not easy. And I have, you know, the kind of brain that gets bored easily. Yeah. I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over. It, I find it very boring. So being mm -hmm. consistent for me goes against my the grain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It really goes against the grain for me. So I really struggle with it. I find it hard. I hate it. However, I, I've busted my head trying to find another way because I'm lazy. I'll try and find the easy way out if I can. And I've busted. It's all about working smart and not Exactly. Hard. Yeah. And lazy people do that very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've tried to find other ways other than consistency. Yes. And there, there aren't many. Having a USP mm. can project you further in every yeah. area, like standing out. But there is always a bit of consistency that needs to be done. I agree. But however, when you become consistent, oh my God, like things that start happening yeah. when you are consistent, you stick at something, then it goes into that compound effect. You know, you do something, you fail. Yeah. You, I always remember I used to play Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I oh, yeah, remember, I remember that. that. Yeah. yeah I used um, to love that. And it's a bit like you go along, you make that jump, you fall, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the beginning again. Yeah. But this time you've learned a bit so you can get a bit further. And then you die, you go back to the beginning yeah. again, and then you get a bit further. And that's like consistency, compound interest. Yes. You know, the compound effect, you learn a bit each time, you get better and better and better until it's like, oh my God, I've arrived. I've, you know, 
teaching an old dog new tricks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so consistency is that. <clears throat> absolutely hate it. But when you do it and you stick it. It is a it, necessary step. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I totally agree. But, yeah, is it hard? Is it annoying? Mm. I totally agree with that too. And everything you start out with ha- at first is easy. But when you can have to just keep doing it, mm. same thing over and over again, it's just like, my God, this is draining yeah. every bit of life out of me. Do you know what I mean? I actually find some. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Bring them out. <laughs> Let's talk about them. Um... Red. So there's, I mean, there's some that are not nice. Some people need help. There's a lot of keyboard warriors that just love to go off for no reason. Yeah. I'm and... like, this is a TV show or this is whatever it is. Like, this is... Mm. And it's, they get a 30 second clip of an hour's conversation. Yeah. And they have this big judgment on you and your character. The tip of the iceberg Mm. of my relationship and what happens to me in that environment, like, Mm. that is not the full story of who I am. Sam Prince was right to meet Joel and tell him about himself. No lies were detective, and it swiped the smug look off his face and showed oh, that he <laughs> showed that he and Robbie can't dog Inga for free. Oh wow. Hold up. Let me speak <laughs> about this scene. I literally went into that scene to a pub. Like, can you picture me in a pub? And I thought that. I thought, Jesus Christ, there's like four guys there. Yeah, I literally. I thought you held your own this in that is situation. The thing. I walked into that and I was like, why are all the men here? <laughs> they're all going to jump for you. me. <laughs> they're not here to flirt with me, they're here to attack. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck is going on? I, I did think that. It to literally be shook me to my car. I was like, what are these boys mm. doing here? Even though they weren't there to cause any harm. No. It, it, it just. It's intimidating. It's very intimidating. I, I, when I watched that, that's exactly what I thought. I, I was thought like, that is. Oh, that's the tactic y'all use mm. intimidation. Yeah. But yeah, fair enough. Fair play. Mm. I thought you stood strong because I thought, as, when I saw that scene, <clears> I thought. Do not back down, Joel. Don't you dare. I know. (laughs) I'm not a fighter like that by nature. No, but you'll stand up for yourself. Oh, yeah, I will stand up for myself. You'd say the same to Inga as you would to any of them. For sure, Mm. for sure. But, like, I'm not going to fight with crazy. Like, y'all want to be crazy? Y'all can be crazy. Mm. Y'all want to stand in the pub and wait for my cute looking ass? (laughs) Y'all can do that. Okay? (laughs) So maybe an unpopular opinion, but Joel is quite subtle and and, and subtle. undercurrent ways controls aspects of Robbie's life, friends, oh, with the guys <laughs> of doing what's best for him. I've got to say, that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but who doesn't at some point in life Try and do that. Like you have to, you have to stand up for what you believe in. In relationships, sometimes you do have to like hmm. coerce certain things. Otherwise, like, you're a doormat and yeah, you get nothing. One thing I'm not is a doormat, bitch. Mm. And I'm never going to apologize for asking and demanding the things that I need to feel respected in my relationship. And as well, they don't see the full picture. They don't see what they Robbie see... demands exactly. or needs exactly. as well. Exactly. So. There's a lot mm-hmm. that happens off screen mm-hmm. for sure. Yes. Just a bit. Just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so the next one, I have so much respect for Joel. He is so honest and ethical. He said the truth. Someone needed to. Joel is brilliant. Love him to bits. Oh, <laughs> that was a nice one. I was ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> That was a really nice one. I think the thing is with me, I, I I do have, I'm obviously like a well-rounded person. Like I do have a nice side to me. I have a bitchy side to me. I have all these sides to me and I never do anything with any malice or mean hearted intention. I think that's something that I've grown to try and like, you know, mm. embody. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'm wrong. Joel is incredibly articulate in his thoughts. He just hits the spot and is totally right. Bitch. (laughs) It's taken me a long time to be articulate. (laughs) (laughs) 
as you listen to my voice, you will feel obliged, obligated, compelled to subscribe, like and share. So I just want to thank everybody for being a part of our first episode. I think, Mm. you know, it's important to remember our journey and where we've come from and, you know. Introduce ourselves. Introducing ourselves, who we are, what we're about. We've got bloody hypnotist, (laughs) bloody hustler in the corner. (laughs) We are just go-getters. And, um, yeah, I I think it's clear that character is built under pressure. (laughs) Mm -hmm. True. Do you have a final thought? Character is built by how you respond to what happens in your life. Whether it is winning every game, losing every game, getting rich, dealing with hard times. Character is the result of hundreds and hundreds of choices you make that gradually turn who you are at any given moment into who you want to be. You can make a living or you can design a life.